let's bring in somebody that just two days ago was on my show, the former British ambassador to the U.S. He was solidly with the stay, the stay with the European camp, Ambassador Peter Westmacott, back with us right now. Ambassador, describe the moment when you realized that the stay camp was not going to win this thing. Well, thanks for having me back. I have to say, when I was with friends last night, dinner, one, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock in the morning, it looked not too bad. The pound was up at $1.50. It sounded as though the stayers were going to win. Then it went up and down a bit during the night. I didn't wait for the whole night because I thought, this is going to be close, it's going to take some time, I'm going to take some sleep. So I didn't know how bad it was until 5 in the morning when I woke up and the gap was four points in what I call the wrong direction. But it, it was a, a very sad and very sobering moment. Well, you know, how, how do you or perhaps some of the bookies have gotten it pretty significantly wrong? And I'm not pairing you with, <laughs> with the bookmakers in London at Ladbrokes, but boy, <laughs> we all went to sleep at one point. I, of course, woke up at 1 a.m. and saw what was going on and said, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is quite yeah. stunning and unbelievable. Well, you and in know, fact, the posters have been the world pretty poor, torpedo. I'm afraid. Go ahead. I was going to say that the posters have not done very well with recent elections in the UK and, and not even that brilliantly in the United States. We tend to say that the bookmakers get these things right and they were pretty sure uh, that Remain was going to win. But for one reason or another, it, they were wrong and we got the result that we, we have got. The young uh, voted very heavily in favor of staying. The over 65s voted pretty heavily in, stay, in favor of going, which is leaving a number of people to say that the old have screwed up the chances for the future of the younger generation and what do they think they're doing because they have landed the United Kingdom with a, a series of really pretty complex issues to resolve, never mind the rest of Europe. And then on the whole, the people who do not have college education tended to vote, especially the males, mm -hmm. tended to vote to leave. But I think that was not fully predicted. It was very geographical as well. London and the South East voted very strongly in favor of staying in the European mm -hmm. Union. So did Scotland. But much of the rest of the country did not. Well, I guess this appears to a lot of us like decades of Euro skepticism, if you will, really coming to a head and, and kind of exploding and imploding that there was so much disappointment with the relationship with the European Union. It got worse and worse and that perhaps the tipping point was this issue of immigration, uh, the Schengen, as a, the open borders, so to speak, really starting to uh, agitate a lot of people in England who felt that they wanted to preserve what has long been the monarchy and the beauty of what is of the United Kingdom. What do you say to that? I think that's, uh, there's a lot in that list. Uh, and the fact is that over a, a period of time, a number of people in the United Kingdom, politicians and others, have tended to demonize the European Union, setting aside its many achievements. Mm -hmm. And that has led a lot of people to say, well, uh, let's get out of it. Why do we want to stay? We are, after all, protected from some of the impacts of the immigration crisis because we're not a Schengen country, as we call it. We don't, we don't have to, uh, right. the same borders as the Schengen countries. We're not part of the single currency, so we've been protected from the worst of the Eurozone crisis. Right. And the UK has got half the level of unemployment of the rest of the European Union and, and more than double the average rate of growth. So I think a lot of people have said to themselves, well, we can, we can do well without this, thank you very much. And by the way, the European Union is responsible for all sorts of terrible things that happen in our country. There was a lot of disinformation, frankly, during the campaign. A lot of uh, untruths were told about, about the European Union. But I think you're right that there was uh, that sense over a period of time. And you can probably add, if you, if you want to, that the British were always a little more half-hearted about the EU okay. membership thing. They came late. Uh, we are very attached to the history of our sovereignty and our independence and so on. And a number of people in Britain were never 100% sure about it. But uh, I think this decision now is a, a dramatic one. Okay. And there are some signs of people who voted to leave saying, oh, my God, what have I done? What does this mean right. for the economy? Well, what does this mean that. for our prosperity? <laughs> there is always that, Ambassador. The reality sinks that. in, but we shall see. Ambassador Peter Westmacott, uh, with us solidly with the state camp. You didn't get it this time. We'll be watching to see how this unwinds. Thank you so much, Ambassador. We appreciate it.